to Canova United Methodist Church and our April 19th, 2020 virtual church service. This is the day that the Lord has made and we're glad you joined us for church. Now let's begin with our call to worship. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise the Lord in the heights. Let them praise the name of the Lord, whose name alone is exalted, whose glory is above earth and heaven. Now children, it's time to gather around for your message from Pastor Jim. Good morning. Do you know who this is? It's me, Pastor Jim. And I've got a mask on. I can take it off now. I'm the only one in the sanctuary. The other day, I, I needed to go see the doctor. And I had to wear a mask, and so did everyone else in there. So it was a little hard to tell who anybody was. And I was standing there, and someone spoke to me. And after they spoke to me, I recognized who it was. It was someone I hadn't seen for several years, but I knew very well. But with their mask on, I didn't notice them right away. Now, in our Easter stories, we hear about uh, the disciples and, and Mary and some of the other women and some of uh, people that we don't have their names, but they're, they're talked about, like the men on the way to Emmaus and uh, people who saw Jesus but didn't immediately recognize him because, after all, they thought he had died and was in the grave. Why would they expect to see him walking around? We're told that that on the day of his resurrection, that Mary Magdalene was there in, in front of the tomb and she was weeping and crying and, and so sorry because Jesus had died. And Jesus had resurrected and, and he, he was there and, and she thought he was a gardener until he spoke to her and she recognized his voice and said, Rabboni, my, my teacher, and then uh, we have the story of Jesus appearing to the disciples and immediately he showed them his hands and his side where he had been wounded so they would know it was really him. And then later, a week later, because Thomas had not been with the disciples when Jesus first came, you know, they told him, they said, Thomas, we've seen Jesus. And he said, I won't believe that unless I see his, his wounds and touch his wounds and know that it's really him. And, the, and then when he did appear with Thomas, he, he went immediately to Thomas and said, Thomas, touch my hands and touch my side and see it's really me. He said, don't doubt, but believe. You know, Jesus would then go on to say, blessed are those who will not see me like the disciples did that day. And yet they will believe. They'll believe in the risen Savior. That's you and me. When we celebrate Easter, we're proclaiming that we believe that Jesus rose from the dead. That he rose again to show us that, that he had overcome death. And that if we believe in him, one day like him, we'll be in heaven. That's great news. And there's a, a wonderful song that we often sing at, at Easter and one of those lines says, you ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. God, the Holy Spirit speaks to us and, and deals with our hearts. And, and uh, in our own hearts, we know and we can feel and believe that Jesus is risen, that he's real. And that when we pray, he listens to us. And we can know that, that uh, we can go to him when we do things wrong and he'll forgive us and help us and make us better. Jesus is risen and we're so glad. And you and I as believers in Jesus 
are supposed to let people know he is alive and he loves them and he wants them to be Christians, to follow him in the way that he has taught us to love one another. So you ask me how I know he lives? He lives within my heart. And I hope he lives in your heart too. Let's pray together. Will you bow your heads and shut your eyes? Dear Jesus, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for giving us a witness of your spirit within our hearts. Amen. Thank you all. And may you go out and share with everyone, with everyone the good news that Jesus lives in your heart. Today's Psalter is Psalm 116. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices and my body also rests secure. For you do not give up to Sheol or let your faithful one see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Now, let's move into our time of prayer concerns and joys. Let's take a moment to think about the joys that we have. Let's also think about our concerns. Go ahead, shout out your joys and concerns to the TV channel or to your iPad, iPhone, to your family members. But always know God hears each and every one of them. Also, if you have a specific concern you would like to share, remember to call the church office. Utilize our prayer chain by either calling Althea Caldwell or by emailing kumcprayers at gmail.com. Now let us move into the time of prayer and bow our heads. Today, we give you praise and thank you for our recent celebration of Easter, which reminded us of your resurrection. We thank you, O God, that you sent your only Son to die on the cross for our sins. We also want to thank you for our daily blessings that you freely give us. Today, we ask a special blessing on each person and each family member who is part of our virtual church service. You know their praises, and we give you thanks for those. And you know their concerns, and we ask for prayers for those. Today, we pray for healing. We pray for those who may be ill, those who may be recovering from injuries, 
those who may have had recent surgeries, those who are undergoing chemotherapy, those who may be in radiation. Lord, you know the specific circumstances, so we just pray that each person can feel your presence today. We also today pray for inner peace. We don't know each person's circumstances, but we do know there are people listening who are concerned about their jobs. Some are concerned about the lack of a paycheck because every time they go to the mailbox, a new bill has come in. We pray for the safety of family members who may be on the front lines, helping with those who are sick. We pray for those with family members in the hospital or in rehab and cannot visit them. We also pray for grieving families who may not be able to spend the last minutes with their loved ones or even share a celebration of life with friends and families. We pray today for those who are lonely, those who may be separated from family because of quarantine restrictions, travel constraints, or just anxieties been exposure of the virus between the generations. We know many grandparents are missing those grandkids. We know many children are missing mom and dad. We pray for those in nursing homes who may not fully understand why visitation of family and friends is no longer allowed. We continue to lift up our nurses, our doctors, our pharmacists, EMTs, paramedics, the list is massive. Those who are dedicating their lives daily with dealing with people who are ill, as well as those that are exposed to the coronavirus. We pray for the teacher who, although occasionally lacks a break from their students, is still worried daily about their students, their education, their home life, and if that child has food to eat. We pray for those with addictions, those that are in recovery programs. This is a very difficult time for them. We continue to pray for the scientist who is trying to find a cure. We continue to pray for our nation. We pray for our leaders as they make decisions that impact each and every one of us. We continue to pray for all people as we have our stay at home, unless it's absolutely necessary to be out, rulings. Lord, we know our list is long, but you know you have heard every spoken concern as well as those which are unspoken. Now join me as we pray together the prayer that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. It's now time in our service for tithes and offerings. Please be in prayer for our church at this time as we meet our financial obligations. Over the past week, we've received questions on how to give during this time. So I'll explain various options. As always, a check can be dropped by the church or mailed to the church. Our physical address is Canova United Methodist Church, 503 15th Street, Canova, West Virginia, 25530. Another option, use your online banking. Set us up as a vendor, as you would any other uh, merchant. Once your draft has been initiated, the bank will send a check to the church. Or the third option is to use online giving. You can go to our website, which is canovaumc.com. The website has a tab, which is easy to follow and allows you to charge your amount to a credit card. These details are listed on our Facebook page, as well as on a flyer, which can be picked up at the front door if you happen to be out, which we are discouraging. Thank you.
Let us pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give to our church. We ask that you give us wisdom to use this money to benefit your ministries. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Please join me in the affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Good morning. Our scripture lesson today is from the Gospel of John, verses 19 through 31. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for the fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my fingers where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, His disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God, Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We often approach this text by berating the the apostle Thomas for his lack of faith. And even though the other disciples plainly told him that they had seen the risen Christ, he refused to believe it. He demanded to see and touch the wounds that Jesus bore in his crucifixion. And although there is some validity in that interpretation of the text, one can also point their finger at the other disciples who were just as guilty of doubt when they were told by the women who first saw the risen Lord, yet refused to believe them. Just like Thomas, it was only when they saw Jesus in person for themselves that they believed. If anything, we can at least commend Thomas for his honesty. Now, he's noted for being a bit outspoken, albeit questioning, and perhaps a bit pessimistic at times. But given the circumstances, I really can't say that I can fault him that much. And I get the sense that although Jesus clearly rebukes him with his words, Jesus' actions spoke even louder. As the first thing that Jesus does is to address Thomas' stated need to see and touch Jesus' wounded hands and side. If anything, this story about Thomas offers us insight into the gracious and encouraging nature of Jesus. It helps us to understand how God approaches us in our shortcomings and failures. Once again, Jesus demonstrates the overarching character of God that of grace, unmerited favor, extended to us despite our shortcomings. In both the stories of Jesus' appearances to the disciples, he gave them physical proof of his resurrection. He provided them what he knew they needed to answer their fears and their questions and doubts. Jesus met them where they were. He helped them to get where they needed to be so that he could send them out 
to be the apostles who would take the word, the, the good news of Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth. If you look back across the rest of, of John's gospel, you'll see that Jesus provided people with what they needed to come to faith in him. Over the past weeks in our lectionary sermons, we have uh, talked about Nicodemus, who learned that although he was a well-schooled scholar uh, in Scripture, he still needed to be born again. And the Samaritan woman at the well, she needed to confess her sin and to receive a new life, which Christ offered her, uh, as he called it, the living water. And the man who was born blind from birth, he received not only physical sight, but unlike the Pharisees who had their sight, he was able to see that God had sent Jesus to be the Messiah, the one who brought him spiritual life as well. The examples and stories that John shares about Jesus make it evident that Jesus is willing to meet people where they are, to give them what they need, to help them to come to faith in Him. And He continues to provide what we need in our lives to help us grow in our faith. At issue here in this story about Thomas lies the lesson that Christ offers regarding our human tendency to have doubts and fears and failures of faith. Like us, the disciples had a real desire to please Jesus. But again, like us, that human perspective that we have limits our ability to trust and believe that God will provide. We tend to judge our abilities based on our experiences. And so it is through our experiences and our tests and our trials that we learn. We learn how and that we can trust God who will provide us for what we need, for where we are in our faith journeys. Being a disciple calls for an ever-increasing level of faith. That's what being a disciple is. We're growing and learning in our faith. And what we learn from the many stories of faith in the Bible is how people do grow or how they had grown through their struggles and challenges presented to them in their lives. It called for them to seek God's deliverance, God's provision for their journeys. I've heard it said that if we could do what God wants of us on our own, then why would we think we ever needed God? And there's some truth in that. And I've also heard it said that when God calls you to it, God will bring you through it. That's been my experience as well. Think about the wonderful stories that we have in the Bible. You know, Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebecca, Jacob and his family, the story of Joseph and Moses and Joshua, Ruth and Naomi, Joseph and Mary, Paul and the apostles, the believers in the early church, and thousands of stories of believers in the history of the church down through the ages, even unto today. The precedent of God's provision of grace and power and inspiration in our lives as we grow in faith is firmly established. The writer of the book of Hebrews notes that the evidence of faith in the lives of God's people uh, is there in Scripture for us. And we know, as we look back across some of those characters and think of those stories, they were not perfect people. But they were those who trusted God and who grew in their faith by acting on that faith. The writer of Hebrews describes faith as being sure 
of what we do not see. And he also notes that this is what the ancients, these stories in the Bible, that's what they were commended for, being sure of what we do not see. That same writer in chapter 4, verses 14 to 16 says, Therefore, since we have a high priest who has ascended into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are. Yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Do you hear that? To find grace to help us in our time of need. That's our Jesus. That's the one who tells Thomas to stop doubting and believe. That's the one who understands us because he has endured life in this world and he has overcome it. Today, we face great challenges as this pandemic has just brought havoc, not only to our physical health, but to our very way of life, our, our work, our play, our relationships, our economy, our social structures, our politics, and even our spirituality. The challenge for us, the opportunity given us, is for God's people to shine for Christ in service and especially in our attitude of trust and faith. Christ points for us to serve, to help others, to pray, to encourage, to seek God's grace and power to overcome all the adversities that we are facing. And surely we have seen so many of our brothers and sisters in Christ throughout the world employ God's power and grace in facing whatever role this crisis has called for them to play. It's just what God's people do. And I know it's not been easy, and there are many days that we have to call on God's grace, perhaps to just get up and get with it in the morning, to fight back the fears and the doubts and the exhaustion perhaps some anger and resentment, a sense of unfairness, and even that impulse to, to just give up and give in. Oh, but thanks be to God for the grace that God supplies, for that still, small voice of God that speaks to us, encourages us, and tells us to trust in Him, to focus our attention on Christ who walks with us and before us in the midst of the storm. Yes, there's going to be those days when we just can't do it. There's going to be those days when we feel like we've failed, when we've lost the battle, when we're ready to get, even give up hope of ever getting things right and getting back to normal. And so I think of this story as it shares with us Thomas and his failure. Imagine how he felt when Jesus appeared and confronted him about his failure to believe. Jesus pointed it out directly to him. Thomas didn't deny it. He didn't offer excuses. You see, the first step in fixing our failures is to admit them, to confess them. Jesus' rebuke of Thomas wasn't to punish him or to humiliate him or to shame him. It was to help him, to offer him the opportunity to own the truth, to confess his fault so that he could deal with it. Paul reminds us in his letter to the Ephesians in chapter 4 that the church is the body of Christ, that we work together and we grow together toward maturity in Christ. 
And as such, we speak the truth in love. Paul says that speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. Christ exemplified that in his approach to teaching his disciples. He loved them, and so he corrected them. And they understood that. And they knew that when he did so, he was doing it to help them, to build them up, to teach them the better way. As the church family, the body of Christ, we recognize that all of us are on a faith journey together. We are all still growing, learning, and maturing as we follow Christ wherever He leads us in service. We are called above all things to love one another. And in that love, we recognize that whenever we or one of our brothers or sisters stumbles in the faith or they they need encouragement, that we are to support them and love them because we know that they will do that for us as well. In these difficult times, we need to be praying for and supporting one another in our efforts to be the church for a world that needs Christ's light to shine through us. If you and I are struggling in any way, We need to know that others are praying for us and supporting us and encouraging us. For that's what Christ would have us to do. Remember, Christ knows our every weakness and He will be there to help us overcome them. To empower us for our mission. To help us Resist temptation to forgive us when we sin, to encourage us when we falter, and to put us back on the path, the one that He has prepared for us. As I was preparing this sermon, the Lord put it on my heart to share that there may be someone today who needs to hear a word of encouragement. You may be feeling overwhelmed with stress. You may be exhausted from what you're doing. Perhaps the work that you do as an essential employee or or some position of leadership or responsibility, perhaps as a parent or guardian or the caretaker of a loved one. Perhaps in those roles or whatever role you have in this situation, you might be feeling more and more threatened by the news of the day. You may have financial worries, health concerns. You may be overwhelmed with the task that you feel that you're just really not qualified to do. Hear the words of Jesus today. He loves you. He knows your every need. He knows your struggles. And he wants you to not doubt him, but to believe. He is the risen Christ. In him is life. All power and authority in heaven and earth are his to command. Confidently approach the throne of grace. Come to him in prayer. And in his mercy... Christ will give you what you need. Now, as John finished his chapter, he does, uh, he does so telling us that the things that he shared about Christ in his gospel were intended to lead us to faith, that we might believe in him, might be saved by him, that we might be able to share those things with others so they also could come to know him. I pray this morning that you do believe in Jesus, that you've sought his grace to forgive your sin, 
that you're serving as his disciple. If not, I invite you today to open your heart to him in prayer. Ask him to come into your life, to forgive your sin, to make you one of his disciples. And then I encourage you to become part of a church. If you're in our community, we certainly invite you to come. When, whenever we have the doors open, we'll be glad to see you face to face. But in the meantime, be in contact with us so that we can uh, be encouraging you and helping you as you, as you begin in your, in your faith journey. There are many great churches in our community or wherever you may live. Get into one of them. Grow with them. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we are on a journey of faith together. And the same Jesus who met Thomas where he was in his struggle of faith still meets us where we are in our struggles today. If you have challenges in your faith journey, call upon the Lord for help. And if you don't, well then you pray for the rest of us. For this is real. And we need to have our focus on Christ to see us through our journey. And all God's people said, Amen. for service. Continue to check out our Facebook page, Canova United Methodist Church, and check out our website, canovaumc.com. Both the Facebook page and the website has many pieces of information. It's kept updated. It has postings from Pastor Jim for his Wednesday evening Bible study. Uh, it's also where you can find the links to our Sunday services. So be sure and check out Facebook and our website. If you need us, please contact the church office, message us through Facebook, or drop us an email. Concerns list and announcement sheet is located on the table just inside the front doors. I also keep it posted on Facebook and the website. If you get a chance, go out there and fill out your contact information form. It can be found on our website, which again is canovaumc.com. Another way to stay in touch is to be part of our prayer chain. If you need to add your email to this, notify kumcprayers at gmail.com. With that, I'm going to say have a great week. Hope to see you soon in our physical building, but until then, stay safe, protect yourself, protect your loved ones. Well, I'm glad that you could be with us today in worship. It's good to know that uh, the risen Lord is, is uh, living in our hearts, that uh, he has given us the proof of his resurrection by the presence of his Holy Spirit within us. Uh, Jesus has said, blessed are those who have not seen, but yet believe. And we're so glad to know that we believe. And uh, so as we go out into the world, uh, and we are the church, let us go forth with the witness of that loving grace that we carry within us, the presence of Jesus Christ. Now go forth and be the church. And all God's people said, Amen.